Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is the March 2024 OpenNTF webinar and uh, we are in the middle of time zone change across the world. So thank you for joining us live. And if not, then uh, I'm glad you found us on the uh, YouTube page. Um, today's presentation is by Darren Duke uh, around Domino Security. I've seen a flavor of this presentation before and it is excellent. So we're looking quite forward to it. Uh, very quickly, We'll uh, do a couple of uh, introductory comments and then jump right into the presentation and we'll have Q&A at the end. Uh, so very quickly, uh, our regular thank you to our sponsors, HCL and Prominic, uh, contribute uh, resources so that we can uh, support the community um, and we thank them very much for their contribution. Similarly, I uh, want to make a point of uh, reminding everyone that uh, if you're on this webinar, you are part of OpenNTF, you are part of the community. Um, and if there's something that you'd like to offer or come and share or ask, um, please do so. We're always looking for contributions. Uh, ultimately, we all learn from each other. Um, and certainly uh, a lot of the people that uh, are around for a long time here, I've learned from and, and appreciate everybody's contribution. So if you've got something to share, we encourage you to come along and share it. Quick note about upcoming events. Next week, we've got our regular uh, repair Cafe and Hangout. Uh, we've switched our, our Hangouts now to be any topic as opposed to admin or dev specific. So please come and join us on Discord. Uh, and because we are in the middle of time changes between North America and Europe here, um, please pay attention to when the timing is. It'll be at 11 a.m. Eastern time, uh, which right now is an hour later than normal in Europe um, and wherever you are across the world. Uh, also, a reminder that Engage, literally one month from now, will be happening. Uh, we'll all be in Antwerp, and um, hopefully we'll uh, see you there. This is the link for those of you that don't have access to our Discord server yet. Um, this is where we come and hang out, uh, where the community comes to ask questions and share what they know. So please do come and join us on Discord. Um, we're growing all the time uh, and have fairly active chats around uh, a variety of topics, not the least of which are uh, admin and dev related on Domino, but across a whole bunch of different topics. So please uh, feel free to come and join us there. Uh, and a quick note about upcoming webinars. Jesse Gallagher, our resident dev guru, uh, is going to talk about what's new in Domino 14 with respect to Java. They did a Java upgrade. Uh, in Domino 14, so there's some key points that you need to pay attention to, and Jesse's blogged a bunch about that, and he's going to come in and share that in the webinar. Uh, and then Paul Withers, another of our uh, board members from OpenNTF, in May is going to talk about VoltScript. Paul was uh, one of the key members on the team that developed VoltScript for um, VoltMX, and uh, is going to come and share some dev tips and tools and topics about uh, VoltScript. So we'll see you in May on that one. Lastly, uh, questions. Um, we have a question panel in the uh, GoToMeeting um, UI, so please do use that to ask your questions. We'll hold questions to the end so that they can be properly asked and answered and recorded on the video, which, yes, is going to be posted onto YouTube. Uh, and if you go to our webinars page, there are all kinds of links to all of our previous webinars and Q&A, where we run out of time for Q&A, we blog the questions and answers so that they'll be there and available for you. Um, we do ask, though, that questions are on topic for this webinar. Um, and certainly, if you have a question that isn't on topic, Discord is the place to go. So um, head back to that link, and uh, we can see you over there. And that is it. So Darren, I am going to make you the presenter. That is that one. You see it? That looks good. OK. Thank you very much, Mr. Graham Akers, sir. So yes, I, as, as previously indicated, I, I am Darren Duke. I am janitor level 34 now. I got promoted just a few weeks ago at STS, uh, where we do a lot of stuff. And we've done a lot of stuff for a long time. So this is um, the latest in the Open NTF webinars, Domino Security, not knowing is not an option. And as Graham had indicated, this, this, is, this has been done before, but it's an updated one. Um, a lot of the slides got thrown out <laughs> because it was so old. And I think it was last done in Atlanta for Collabsphere slash MWLug, maybe around 2015, give or take. So it's been a while since this one got done. So here we go. So without much further ado, um, let's talk about uh, who we got to give thanks to. So again, thanks to OpenNTF, um, especially you know Bruce and Nathan, all those many years ago for, for, for creating this great forum. It's been around for a long time now. 
and to all of the past and present board members, all the contributors, and, and most of all, to the users, the, the people who use OpenNTF. And of course, like Graham said, thanks to Prominic for hosting it, and thanks to HCL for, for their support. And also to Roberto, Kim, and Graham for inviting me to present. I still get shocked when people ask me to talk, given how some of my presentations can go sometimes. Uh, and also, thank you to HCL. Uh, I, I, I'll be upfront. I was I was a bit nervous when they took it over. I wasn't sure where it was going to go, but they've give they've given Notes and Domino the development backing that, that IBM just didn't have for the last decade of, of their product ownership. And for the most part, I've not got not got nothing but good things to say about the HCL development arm. There's a couple of places where we still kind of clash, uh, and I'll actually outline a couple of those in in in, in the in the presentation. And then finally, Lisa. Uh, without Lisa, I wouldn't be here. I would never have presented at Lord Sphere back in 2008. And so I wouldn't have been doing this for as long as I have. And she's now a published author, which she does. She tells me all the time when she's doing the dishwasher. And she didn't even tell me to tell you this. So she's probably cowering in her office right now or cackling. I'm not sure which way. Um, so about me, uh, been doing notes since. Uh, Afri and, and just prior to the presentation, myself, Graham and, and Roberto were talking. And I just, I, when I was writing this slide again, I realized that 1996 is almost 30 years ago. That's a long time to be doing a single product. I, I now know how COBOL programmers feel. And somebody had said the other day as well, that that picture looks nothing like me. I think it still does. And you're all gonna look at it because I believe that's how I look. Um, I was the co-founder, one of the three co-founders of STS in 2005, and you know, sometime blogger. I think I'm down to like three blog posts a year or something. Uh, I haven't been on Twitter for a long time, and obviously, ex-host of a couple of different podcasts. Uh, and then there's the blog and Twitter, but y'all, you're gonna get a silence these days from Twitter because I'm not a fan anymore. The 10,000 feet view. What are we gonna cover? So you know, I, I'll apologize up front that this is a bit of a amorphous presentation because you can't really there's there's big buckets i can put stuff in server security user security browser security but there's a lot of overlap too so i i think please forgive me if it's if it's a bit higgledy piggledy and and all around just kind of moving around I, I apologize for that so let's start this so it really all starts with server security and i'm going to shock people by saying that server security doesn't start with the actual server or the security. It starts with your backup and restore. Um, the theme being here that, you know, if your Domino server crashes or you get compromised or script kiddies do all kinds of stuff with a good backup and a good restore, but you can get your data back. You're back in business in a relatively short period of time. And if anyone that's been around Domino for a while will know that, um, you know, the backup, the Domino backup API that was in, in the original versions, while it was very good, there was not very many people support it. Backup exec did until it didn't. Net backup did until it didn't. I think Tivoli probably still supports it, but that's probably only because it's in the same family and the same vendor. Um, but the good news is starting in 12 or 2, and go, this goes back to right when HCL took over development and ownership, uh, the shackles came off and, and the developing, development people at HCL started rolling out of features after, one after the other. This is one of them. Native uh, VSS support in Windows um, was added in 12.02. Uh, if your backup solution supports VSS, then you now have a Domino supported backup system. You don't have to pick one that has Domino specific API calls. Um, I, we, use, we use Veeam with it all the time. You can even do restores of Veeam, although it's a, it's a tad complicated. And uh, not only that, but then I added native backup and restore inside of Domino. Dan, Daniel Lasher did, did a phenomenal job with this. Uh, as, as it stands today, I was just out there this morning to make sure I knew what I was talking about. Uh, it'll back up to the file system, it'll back up to Veeam, and it'll back up to any S3 repository as is. That's built into to the open source product. It's added as a server task, uh, cross-platform mo mostly, so you can back up your Linux servers, you can back up your Windows servers, and it's open source. So you can go out there, and if there's not a feat, not something in there that you want to do, you can do it. Um, reality is it's intended as middleware, and by that I mean it's, it's the intermediary between Domino itself and your backup solution. So let's say you're not running a VSS solution on Windows, what do you do? Well, you can use... The, the native backup and restore to push it to a file system, for instance, and then have your backup software backup the file system. 
or you can use Veeam, or you can shove it straight to an S3 repository. This this is this is a, a, a BFD. That's a big F asterisk 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 deal. Uh, that, that this was added to Domino, and this is this is a big deal. But security always starts with this, right? So you'll hear me say, if you ever come to me and ask me about why you. Yeah, Domino servers don't restore. You're only as good as your last restore. So make sure if you're backing up, you do test restore because we have been involved. We've been brought in by customers who thought they were backing up every day and they weren't. So for the love of God, please test your backups by restoring stuff. So that's where it all starts. It all starts with being able to recover. Now, second part of security, it's all patching, right? Patching is where it starts. The vast majority of vulnerabilities are going to come in via email, but then they're going to find unpatched servers or unpatched workstations, blah, 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 blah. Domino has this problem too. Don't, don't, don't think Notes and Domino don't have patches that fix security holes, et cetera, et cetera, because they do. So as a warning now, um, and this date is coming towards us like a freight train, on January 1st, 2024, 9 and 10 go end of support. 9 has been around for a long time, probably 2013 is a guess, is, I would guess. So if you're running either of those, June the 2nd is not a good day for you. Now, admittedly, it's not going to be June the 2nd when you get whacked, but at some point, there's not going to be a job JVM update that you'll want that you don't get. So right, if you're on 9 or 10, look at 12, look at 14. Honestly, I would skip 11 because the template changes suck. Um, also, at the same time, uh, Xwork goes end of support, which I forgot all about Xwork until I went looking about the end of support dates just a couple of weeks ago. And also LEI of version 9, which is called IBM I, which probably is uh, IEI and probably is called HEI now, because why not just change the first letter all the time. That also goes end of support. So if you have any name products, June the 1st, you don't have support. You are not going to get updates. You need to start moving now because it's a mere three and a bit months from the date this webinar is recorded. Um, as a time of writing, I checked this morning, uh, 11 and higher, so 11, 12, and 14 do not have end of support dates at the time of writing. And if you want to find out the exact dates, it's right there. But January 1st, for everything that has a 9 or a 10 in it, is basically what's going to happen. So speaking of patching, fix packs. Um, fix packs have a way to go because fix packs not only add semblance of features every now and again, but also add fixes to the product that could be security related, generally Java or generally Eclipse related, sometimes like that, and sometimes new features. So as a general rule, the higher the Domino version number, the, the more secure you will be, both on, on any anything you talk about. So Nomad, Travel, a Leap, a Client, a Server, anything. Um, also, if you have a, a fix pack, the higher the number of a fix pack, or the higher the number of the IF, the, the, the more secure it will be. I want to point this out because a lot of people don't follow Thomas Hampel's blog, and you probably should because he is the product manager uh, and he's an all round good guy because uh, he talks to me. <laughs> he doesn't, he taught me. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. Uh, there is a new download site that was, that was hung off of his blog a couple of months ago, and it finally gets us out of, uh, you know, FlexNet. And, and FlexNet was probably the, 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 the awful love child of, of Fix Central. When, when, when HCL had to get out of Fix, Fix Central because the move from IBM, FlexNet was a decision. FlexNet is probably worse than, than Fix Central in my, my opinion. At least I could find something in Fix Central. I just couldn't find Fix Central. Now I can't find anything at all in, in FlexNet. Um, but the good news is they've developed a new one. And I, it looks like it's an X-Pages app, or at least a Notes app. And the link is there. And once you log in with your uh, ID, you're going to get all of the listed products that you've got support for. And from there, you can find all the latest versions and all the latest fix packs and all the latest IFs all in one place with no scrolling, no searching, no four letter words, no pulling your hair out, no asking for the Lord's help, no asking for any favorite deity to come and rescue you from what the hell it is FlexNet. So, so yay, thank you to HCL. That's, that's big kudos there. But again, that's where you get the fixes from. So go there, take a look. You're gonna, you'll find out what, what kind of, how, how far back you are. Okay, so let's start. Ta let's start talking about server security. It really all starts with, you know, SSL, TLS, SHA2, et cetera, et cetera, right? SSL2 has been dead for decades. SSL3 has been dead for quite a while now. Uh, probably around 2015 is when it was eventually killed off, thanks to Poodle. 
Um, you don't need SSL version three unless you have an old rickety copier that can't do uh, normal TLS. At that point, honestly, I would just turn off the copier's TLS and just do straight SMTP, but you, 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 you got choices. TLS is king. Uh, it has been king for a while now, 2015. Uh, TLS 1.2 is now the default in Domino. TLS 1.0 is actually disabled in Domino 12 and higher. You can re-enable it if you want to. Uh, you don't generally want to because uh, it's now considered um, vulnerable, quote unquote. Although I'm not, I don't believe there's really any any actual attacks on it. Domino never had 1.1, so you don't have to worry about that. There is still no TLS 1.3 support in Domino. Um, sad, sad, sad face goes there. Um, there is an idea that I would hope everyone will pile on and ask for uh, in the link there. And he's hoping that, you know, HCL take note of IBM's problem uh, in 2015 when Poodle came along and they should have had TLS support in Domino years before they did. And, you know, that, that was a bit of a, public relations nightmare for, for, for IBM back then. I talk about this a bit further on in the presentation where I talk about how many how many years it takes Domino to get certain security products. I, I don't I don't ding HCL very often, but they, they, they are behaving a bit like IBM on adding TLS 1.3. Um, also, when you get uh, with the new systems, we get you know perfect forward secrecy. Again, that's been in there since 901, fixed back free. So all the, all the versions of Domino since then have it. Uh, perfect forward secrecy kind of is a, you know, suspenders and socks kind of idea. It's, it's belts and suspenders, uh, braces from the other side of the Atlantic. Uh, it basically flips your keys so that even if someone is storing all your SSL traffic, usually a three letter acronym beginning with sounding like NSA, uh, they can't then replay it when they compromise your key later on because the key is recycled every transaction, basically. Um, so that's, if you have, all you can do perfect forward secrecy if you turn it on sometimes on all the servers you're going to see a performance hit sometimes you don't if you don't i'll leave it on um so what do we do so we're start we're, we're talking about domino ciphers so you with start tls if you have problems you can for very old smtp installations and these are usually old 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 ones um which now most of you have gone, I don't think you'll need it, but SSL enable insecure v2, blah, 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 hello equals one, will allow the SMTP TLS to at least allow it to do a hello on the old system. It doesn't enable SSL version two or version three as the transport mechanism. It just allows the handshake to do. We haven't had to add that in a while, but if you see a problem, that's more likely a fix. So ciphers. Um, over the years, we've had a couple of ways of doing ciphers. One was in the server document, which is kind of what you see here, or in the internet site document. Then it went out to the SSL server spec because they were adding server specs quicker than they could add them to Domino. So there wasn't a UI. You don't need the SSL cipher spec anymore in the ENI. It still exists, and, and the codes are there uh, in that screenshot on the right inside the brackets, the two digit on the bottom and the four digit on the top, they're actually the cipher spec numbers. So you can still use SSL cipher specs, but honestly, I wouldn't. Um, HCL have kind of ditched IBM's philosophy of not updating the uh, name and address book very often. So it does get updated with, with the ciphers as they add and remove them. And the one thing to look for is when a deprecated cipher is enabled, it'll tell you in the server doc, in the, in the server when you start it, it'll say these deprecated ciphers are enabled. So what you can do is you can go in your server document and all your internet site documents, because it could be in multiple places, and you can check the new ciphers and you can uncheck the old ones. You are going to see CBCs, which is the bottom half of that screenshot. Uh, CBCs are, 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 are really kind of frowned upon these days and so the top ones are all the ones that are considered good by, by hcl and you want to you want to check this after every fix pack because that they're, they're, they are adding removing things all the time start speaking of start tls so so start tls is how smtp is is encrypted between you and whoever you are sending to so the sending server and the receiving server if they both allow start TLS, they will encrypt the message traversing the internet. Um, it's a bit not it's not tricky to say I mean, Domino, it's just not obvious. Um, so it's inbound and outbound is in different places. Uh, you want both inbound and you want outbound. Um, be aware though that start TLS is for encryption only. There's no mechanism to verify the authenticity 
of the connecting server, the authenticity of a connecting TLS certificate. So it's just encryption only. It's encrypting the traffic between you and the next hop. And the next hop could be an Office 365 server. The next hop could be Barracuda Cloud. The next hop could be any third-party email server or another Domino server. But you want start TLS turned on. I think as time goes on now, you are going to see a lot of providers start probably rejecting non non-start TLS email. Free text is is kind of where the, the the hackers live these days. So if we can start getting away from that, that's a good sign. Um, email continued. So DKIM, domain keys identified mail, DKIM. What does it do? Well, it basically tells the recipient server that when I send them an email, the email is cryptographically verified by the recipient and says, oh, you are you are from who you purport to be, the server you purported to be from. Uh, it uses DNS and, and, and pri public private key infrastructure for this. And basically think of DKIM as the next iteration of sender protection format S SPF. Um, it adds on to SPF and between SPF and, and DKIM, you can get some kind of cool stuff. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. But DKIM is two ways. It can be outbound. So you add a signing public signing key to your outbound email. Uh, Domino does it all, all for you once you set it up. And when the receiving server gets it, if it can do inbound DKIM, it goes to DNS, it downloads a private key, and it sees if that both keys are a derivative and can be proved, cryptographically proved. And they usually can. And if it is, it'll let it in. If it's not, you got to decide what you're going to do with the, the non-DKIM allowed email. Uh, that outbound was added in 1201. Uh, for years, if you won the DKIM in Domino, you had to throw another SMTP server in front of it, send mail, blah, blah, whatever, send a, a third party, anything like that. It's now in there natively, so you, you, you don't have to throw an extra SMTP hop in the middle of that if you want to do outbound. Inbound was added in 1202. Inbound really is, is really kind of tied still to mail rules a bit. Um, so if an inbound email comes in and it fails DKIM, you have server mail rules determining what to do with it. Because Domino doesn't support DMARC, which is the third part of this. So you, you've got you got sender protection format, you've got DKIM, and you've got DMARC is is, is kind of a three-legged stool of email protection. DMARC actually tells your server what to do with mail that fails at some level, DKIM or S it's sender protection format SPF. So without Domino having support of DMARC, because it doesn't, and I would presume that's a yet, there is an idea there, if so feel free to pile on and get it added. Um, because Domino can't really support DMARC, it can't really decide what to do with it because what DMARC allows you to do as the sender of the owner of the DNS, you can, with a DMARC DNS record, you can tell the receiving server, if it supports DMARC, what to do when it fails various parts of the, the the test and i'm hoping domino gets that but right now it doesn't uh i think it does need to be added this is one again one of the rare occasions i'm going to kind of beat them up but it needs to be added um so all of that revolves around ssl so we've, we've all known ssl for a long time right we've all used the old old r4 certification manager that had the nice little but nice blue bubbles all over it and then we got uh, KYR Manager, and now, starting with 12, we get Cert Manager. So Cert Manager is the next iteration of, of SSL key management for Domino. It has a lot of advantages, way more than I can add here. Um, but you know, one of the things it adds, it, add, it adds Let's Encrypt support, which means you can now do uh, SSL uh, key generation straight from Domino, straight to the Let's Encrypt public SSL key repositories. SSL repositories and, and create your own SSLs for every single Domino server you ever spin up. Um, it does, as a requirement, require port 80 to be open, um, which can cause some issues with security audits and redirects and stuff like that. Um, so you know it's not a it's not a panacea for everybody, but if you want a quick and dirty, you know, SSL that renews automatically, then let's encrypt with cert manager will work. Cert managers, uh, sorry, Let's Encrypt is not the only certificate of, uh, of authority, not the only CA that's in there. There are a handful. Uh, I think GoDaddy might be in there. I think Network Solutions might be in there. Um, so you can also set up automatic key generation, SSL generation with that, 
and this can be replicated around to your servers. And there are some kind of cool things where when it sees a change, it, you know, you can install SSL cities and stuff like that. Um, even really without a CA being in there, you can upload your other third party ones and it's still easier than, 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 than KYR2, honestly. Uh, again, this is only an R12. If you have early of an R12 server, so if you have an 11 or a 10 or even a 9, uh, Midpoints actually have a solution that you can download still today. The link is there. And you can still use uh, KYR Tool. And every time I do KYR Tool, the first thing I do is I, I, I Google Gab Davis Domino SHA2. <laughs> and I get that. And that is what I follow. I follow every single time. I have done thousands of these. And every single time, I just pull up Gab's, Gab's blog post. Um, so let's say I don't want to do SSL in Domino. Well, I'll, I'll go a bit further. Let's say I don't want Domino itself surfaced from the web. I, I want to protect it somehow. How can I do that? Well, you, you can use a reverse proxy. So what is a reverse proxy? A reverse proxy basically is a server that sits between your Domino server and the person or service navigating to you. So in, in this diagram, the right-hand side is basically your Domino server. The middle is a reverse proxy and the left-hand side is some hopefully high paying customer of yours that's coming to your Domino website to give you lots of money. Um, what a reverse proxy does is it, is it protects your Domino server or any web server from being actually on the internet. It's pretty common to do. Uh, you know, what, 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 are, what are the benefits of reverse proxy? Well, there's, there's several. Um, you can handle more, more than one web server on a reverse proxy. So let's say you have, you know, 25 Domino servers. Do you really want all 25 servers to the web? If you use a reverse proxy, you can reduce that surface area down to one or two reverse proxies. And so that's the only thing that you have that's at risk. You can also put your reverse proxies in a DMZ. So they're even zone restricted from, from what they can and get, get to and not get to. Uh, additionally, you can do SSL offloading. So you know if, if you've got an SSL, thanks to Google, we have to Renew SSLs every 13 months. If Google gets their way, I think it's probably going to get down to every 14 seconds. Uh, it's a bit of a joke, but they are actually talking about, I think it's 45 days now is what Google are trying to force the world to do. So if you have to renew your SSL certificate 45 days and you've got many, 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 many Domino servers to put it on, right? SSL offloading might make a lot of sense because you can put it on a reverse proxy and that's the only place you've really got to replace it or update it. Security, it allows you to hide some stuff, right? Domino likes to tell the world it's a Domino server. You can hide that. You can hide the version. You can hide the name. Uh, the biggest advantage is there's no direct backend to your servers from, from the web. And you can even restrict URI access so that only specific URIs and specific URLs can get to them. And honestly, one of the biggest things is the bottom point there, which is load balancing. So from if I've got a, uh, oh, let me do that. So I can get, so let's say I've got a couple of uh, traveler servers and I, I want to do traveler high availability. I want to do notes, high availability, or verse high availability. What I can do is I can put a reverse proxy in front of these servers and build rules in the reverse proxy so that the users don't know they're hitting a pool of traveler servers or a pool of webmail servers or even a pool of application servers if you do it right. Um, one of the biggest reasons, kind of honestly, to, to use a reverse proxy is, is this. Um, this is this was in the original slide back in 2015, and I, I got a bit of a flack from this from IBM about publicizing how long it took them to do this. Uh, we'll see what hits the else. Uh, so the bottom row there is TLS. TLS 1.3 was the, day, the spec was released was 2018. It's now March 2024. Six years and counting. We don't have TLS 1.3 in Domino. The last time this happened was TLS was not added at all, and then Poodle happened, and Poodle was really bad for many, 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 many reasons. And I'm just hoping that, that you know, HCL will take a note here and don't make the same mistake that IBM made and said, we don't need extra security, because you do. And if your argument is, we don't need to spend the development dollars doing this because there's not a business requirement for it, you need to not wait until there's a business requirement for it because it will hurt a lot. Okay, so what are the reverse proxies? There's, there's Nginx, which is what the cool kids use. Uh, you know, a lot of lot of big people use it. It's open source. Uh, it doesn't just do HTTP. You can do IMAP, SMTP, LDAP, all of that good stuff. Uh, Apache, which is by far the most famous. 
uh, also open source. You've got safe links by, by HCL. Uh, that is actually reverse proxy. It's not simple to use a reverse proxy, but it is. And it was previously called Lotus Mobile Connect. And then because of IBM's penchant to rename stuff when they didn't make their numbers, they renamed it to IBM Mobile Connect. Well, when HCL took it over, they, they re rebadged it to safe links and it stayed that name since. Uh, safe links you might have heard of because it was originally a requirement for Nomad Web. That is no longer true um, in 12 or 14, I forget which, but Nomad now can use Domino natively as, as, as its proxy because Nomad still really is a proxy application, but it's built right in. Safe links is pretty complicated. So, you know, if you don't, if you can use Nginx or Apache, I probably would. Safe links is a bit overly complicated. Um, anything else, right? So, if you've got a lot of money lying around, uh, well, if you don't want to give it to me, I'll take it. Uh, but if you don't want to give me the money and you want to give Big IP or Citrix, you, you can put Netscalers in, you can put F5s in, and F5s usually have all the code built in to do all of the reverse proxying stuff itself, um, and they can fail over, et cetera, et cetera. I will go back a slide because it's worth mentioning. But for both Apache and Nginx, you can build high availability Nginx and high availability Apache. So you have multiple Apache servers hitting multiple backend Domino servers. So if the theory of that is you might never, ever have downtime. You, you can fail backwards and forwards quite nicely with that. Um, the other reason reverse proxies come in handy is you know, in a disaster recovery scenario, when, when you failed over to your colo uh, out in the middle of Arizona, because you know, there's been a hurricane or a or volcano or a wildfire, you know, you can just change the reverse proxy to point somewhere else or have a different config fire it in and all your traffic is automatically working already on your on your DR uh, site. So that, that that's another kind of s smell of a reason to use it. Um, the last one, and it's not the only one, there's lots of proxies, but the last one I mentioned is IBM HTTP server, which was IBM's original way to fix Poodle. Uh, that never came across, I don't believe, uh, in, uh, it, it got, deprecated straight out the gate. I think it was gone in 10. So it's not there. Um, you probably can still download it elsewhere, but it's really just a rebadged Apache server. So if you're going to do IBM HTTP server, honestly, I'll just do Apache and have done with it. Uh, it's no longer included in the install anymore, I don't believe, for Domino. OK, so browser security. Um, this is kind of short, because there's not a lot to talk about. But let's talk about it anyway. Let's, let's, let's see what I, I can make up here. Um, so we have cross-origin resource sharing. So, so the first thing I'll, I'll say here is, is the web is a scary thing. Every single thing that's ever been created for the good of mankind has been bastardized by the awful people of the world to do awful stuff. And, and the web browser is no different. SMTP is no different. Anything that's ever came along has been used for not things that it was supposed to be used for. So the browser is one of them. So you know, cross-origin resource sharing basically says, so me, along, along the lines, I'm paraphrasing a lot here, is that when I surface a page from, let's say, blog.darrenduke.net, you, you as a browser are generally allowed to load any content from blog.darrenduke.net. So the picture of me, the beautiful, young, svelte Darren Duke picture of me comes from my website. So when you're on my website, you see the picture. If that picture came from somewhere else, let's say, you know, Imgur or, or, or Tumblr or somewhere else, completely random site. If your browser doesn't, isn't told specifically to allow that, to load that picture from a different domain, right? So it's shared from a different origin than what I'm going to, then it may not load it and you might not see the image. There's actually, a, I, I actually broke my, my blog just so you could see it. If you go to my blog now, blog.downduke.net, and I think it's the second entry after this webinar, there's a blank space where the the, the slide share should be from a, pre, a presentation I did, but I can't remember what I did. But the slide share doesn't show because I purposely broke the cross-origin uh, sharing. I told it not to allow slide share, and sure enough, it doesn't. So you can't see the presentation. So there's a real world example. It won't be there for much longer. I'm going to fix it this weekend, he said. Honestly, I will fix it. So, there's a couple of links there about how to do it. Um, it's worth pointing out that cause was officially added in Domino 1001 Fix Pack 2. There's, you, you gotta go read about it, but what, what, what basically happens, what, what I've seen in the past couple of years now is that you know, developers don't understand why stuff has stopped working and admins don't know why they're telling them it's their fault. So you've got this kind of dichotomy of, of, a, of a Domino admin not doing development and a Domino developer not doing admin. 
they have to get together and explain to each other what's going on, and they can't. So go look at the official documentation of, of what, what, what HCL added for cause, because you, you can change it. And you can then add other sources to your website to allow them to pull in. There's two links there that, that are pretty good at explaining what cause is better than what I just did here, <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, but it, it, it's in Domino, it's there, it's actually in any file. Um, that you can also pump in a, a, a JSON file, you can put on the server and, and copy it around, et cetera, et cetera. But cause is the first kind of barrier at the browser to stop awful people doing awful stuff in your browser. The second part is CSP, content security policies. So a content security policy basically says, hey, you're trying to run a CSS file, but that CSS file is not coming from me. That smells a lot like cross-site scripting, XSS. And honestly, it does smell like that, which is why the browser will stop it. Um, to spot both CSP and cause issues, honestly, your best, your best bet is to pull up the developer tools in your browser of choice that you develop in and take a look and you will see all manner of red lines saying, oh my God, your cause policy or your content security policy does not allow this to happen, please fix it. The developers don't know how to fix it and the admins don't know what to fix. So this is, this is where we get into that interesting kind of question. So it's, it's worth going and learning about this regardless of whether you develop web developer or not, because at some point you're probably going to have to add it to your Domino web server, otherwise stuff will stop working. And here's an example right here of being able to copy and paste in a in either iNotes or Verse. I, I ripped this straight off HCL site because I didn't actually have anything that I could pull from one of my servers. And that's how it works. So how can you tell, again, the warning here, these, these mitigations are browser side, they're not server side. So if you're writing code on the server side and you're expecting CSP and or cause to protect you, you're missing the point because these are browser level user policies that are pushed down by your server's headers. But nothing's stopping me from pulling out the header by using a reverse proxy or even pulling down Chromium and ripping out all the code that does this and then compile it myself and giving myself a browser that can bypass all of these rules. So even as a developer, you still need the security side on, on, on the server side, you know, cleaning out whatever is coming back to you. Don't just rely on CSP, don't just rely on cause. They are really to protect the user and the browser and the sandbox that the browser is supposed to run it. Okay, user security. I'm doing kind of okay on time, which is shocking. Um, user security, so I'm gonna pull this up first. There is currently an active security bulletin uh, where certain internet passwords created on uh, versions less than 14, so 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, have an issue. If you created them by using the add user button and not registering a user, there is a 5.2 level CVS score right now. So at the end of this presentation, go and click that link. And it's, there's a couple of fixes that you need to do. One is a template. So you need to upload a new template, refresh your design, blah, blah, blah. Then you've got to do the more secure passwords, which we're going to talk about in a second, which is exactly the next slide. Um, but that's that's what it is. It's it's a pretty easy fix. Um, it's not that bad. 5.2 is medium. It's not like it's a 7, 8, or 9, which would be high. But still, I would go do that as soon as you are doing regular server maintenance if you are using anything other than a 14. Now. If you're, you're, always, you're using a 14 server, but your users were created with anything less than that, they probably still have the issue. So you want to follow the directions as well for that. So unless you've got a brand new environment in 14 in whichever user was created, you probably want to do the fix. And again, it's only if you do add person, if you do register, that's not a problem. So one of the fixes is to update existing person documents. And this is good anyway. So you want to use strong internet passwords. Um, it's a setting in, inside a Domino, which is on the next uh, screen, but this is what it looks like. So when I'm using the old style password, it looks like the top screenshot. When I'm using the new style, it looks like HY. And by new, I mean 8.5.1. So everybody has had this functionality for a long time, but you might not have it turned on. Um, so there's a lot of rules around what kind of password you have, like was it a 4.5, was it a 4.6, was it an 8.5? And you can tell by this quickly list of bullet points. 
So how do you get the new password? You do it here. So it's it's in the Domino directory profile. Everyone's like, what's a Domino directory profile? <laughs> um, you've got to go and create one, or you, probably, you might have one, you might not, but you're gonna you have to go find it because most people don't know they have one. Uh, and when you do, it's it's right here. Um, it's that section there, and you basically pick you want the highest version applicable, which is still really eight eight oh one. That's only the first part of this. The first part is telling the server to do it. The second part is getting the users, why can't I click? Getting the users updated. Um, so once you've done that, you select the user in the dominant directory and you select actions, sets you can password. Uh, so I'll go back a second. This tells it to create users going forward with a new password. This tells it to fix users who've already created with a new password. And again, Follow the directions from, from HCL and, and you won't have a problem. But if you don't have this turned on, you want it turned on. You want more secure. You can you never want less secure. Um, so speaking of more secure, how do I do how I how do how do I really do user security? So there's there's a couple of ways. The first thing we're going to talk about is, is SAML. SAML is security uh, assertion markup language. It's an industry standard. A lot like LDAP is a standard, meaning that it's a standard, but some vendors make up their own uh, or don't adhere fully to the standard or don't add stuff. Blah, blah, blah. But what it does, it effectively allows your notes user, I'm going to talk about notes here for a second, your notes user to go completely passwordless on the ID. Not shared login, because shared login. The first time I fire up notes, I've got to know what my password is. This is completely passwordless. With, with SAML, you can have someone for the first time start notes. Um, there's a lot of complexities on the back end here, but it works. I've got a video somewhere on YouTube. It's on the blog somewhere if you want to look at it, uh, where you double click on notes and it self configures and it pulls down the ID. And if it's in SAML and it trusts the workstation I'm logged in as as me, I'm DDuke and I'm, I'm part of the SDS domain. Oh, I believe you. And I never get asked a password. Um, the user never ever has to enter a password ever. Um, you do need ID Vault, and it came in 901. Um, there's no password, so there's no post-it note with a password written on. Uh, so it is actually good. And, and SAML can also be used for web. It's not just a notes protocol. Um, however, most people when they're doing SAML are gonna want it to get rid of the ID file. Because we, when you when you only put in your ID file every, every IV password every time I get a new computer, chances are I don't know what my password is because I haven't had a new computer in four years. So that's generally where it goes. We'll get to other password options later on, but for now we're going to talk about HTTP passwords. So MFA is good for everything. If you can have MFA, you want MFA, multi-factor authentication or two-factor authentication. You know, is everywhere, should be everywhere. If you can turn it on, turn it on. With with Domino, you have two options. You have native uh, MFA support that was added in 12, uh, version 12. Uh, it's TOTP, so it's, it's one-time code. It's the six digits you have to type in. There's no push that I know of, so that you can't push it to Microsoft Authenticator to tell you to open it up, but that, that, that doesn't exist, it's six digits. And it's per internet site setting, so um, you, you might you might have it on some internet sites, you might not have it on others, and so you might miss some. Or you can kind of get a, you can, can build different rules for inside versus outside. Uh, it also works on Verse Mobile, um, I believe. I think it does. And now maybe Nomad 2, I think, possibly. Uh, I went looking, I couldn't prove that, but I thought I'd saw that on a slide somewhere. Uh, I might have dreamed it, but I think that's it now. Uh, the native support for 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 TOTP is much, much simpler than SAML integration is. Much easier. It takes, you know, an hour to two hours to set up. SAML takes a day to two weeks to set up. Um, I'm not a fan of the implementation as much as I like it being native inside of it. Uh, I think they could have made it a lot better uh, because there's no concept of being inside the LAN versus outside the LAN or a guest computer or a or a kiosk computer versus my computer. So I think there's some things they could do uh, to, to, to make it a lot more useful. I'm not sure if they're still tied by the ramifications of the LTPA cookie uh, around that, and that might be not why it's happened, but there's an idea out there somewhere. Uh, I couldn't, for the reason I couldn't find a link. I think it's my idea. Uh, 
but it's, there's an idea out there to add improvements like Office 365 has, which is remember this browser for 30 days, you know, have some kind of IP address protection where I can say, if I'm coming from 10.10.10.10 slash 24, don't ever prompt me for, for MFA because I'm inside, so I'm going to implicitly trust the machine. Things like that, I think, could really make it Im impressive. If I need that, then SAML is your friend because because SAML, again, is a standard. SAML is not just for notes, but it can be used for the web as well. Um, with SAML, you can control the MFA provider. So with, with SAML, you can have Duo. You can have a Duo push, you know, a Microsoft push. So SAML adds the features that are kind of missing from native. But as stated earlier, it is much more complicated, much more difficult, and, and, and really is a lot of hoops to jump through because you've got a lot of different things going on once you implement SAML. It's not just the domino administrator doing it. There's, there's, there's a lot of moving parts with, with, with SAML, but that's one of the options. Now, that's MFA. What about my passwords? Well, with your internet password, you now have choices. Um, the old way, you had two passwords. You had the notes ID password, and you had the internet password stored in the person document. Two passwords, users were told, you have two passwords. Users are like, this is the same system. Why do I have two passwords? Aneurysm, pop, you would just, they would just die. They don't understand it. Users don't get it. It's a pain in the backside for admins. It's difficult to manage. There's lots of kludgy workarounds that were added over the years, right? I can install a service with notes that when I change my notes password, it tries to update my web password. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. You know, there were plugins uh, with Tivoli Identity Manager that would try and sync them. Look, just lots of hacks that would to try and fix it. And finally, we, we have a, a not hack way of doing it. This is new in 11. It's called shared uh, internet password. Um, I think that's what they still call it. That's what we called in the beta back in the day. I think that's still an M. And it allows Domino to use the vaulted ID's password as your IBM, uh, as your HTTP password, as your internet password. So no longer do you have to have two passwords. You can have my notes ID password that's in my vault. HTTP task will come and look at that, extract the password, look to see if the hashes are the same, say yes, that's the password matches, you are in. One password to rule them all from a domino perspective. No longer, you no longer need two domino passwords. You can now have one domino password, and that's the notes ID password that's in the vault. So my client uses the ID vault, the ID that's downloaded from the vault that has the password. My internet the HP goes, goes to the ID vault and checks to see if my password is the same. If it is, it lets me in. Beautiful, 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 beautiful feature. Amazing what they did. ID vault, we knew ID vault was going to be great for lots of reasons. This is actually probably the latest of those great reasons. Much more simplified. You change it once, you change it in one place, you change it everywhere. Uh, beautiful, beautiful functionality. Now, hold on to your hand, hat here, though, folks. Not only do you have two choices, you have three choices. You have Active Directory password sync. I'm going to pause there for a second so you can all get up off the floor because everyone has been asking for this for decades. Yes, you can sync your Active Directory user password into the notes ID in ID Vault. Um, it, it's new in 12, so not newish anymore, but newish, but still. It was, it was kind of a, there was a couple of things in 11 that built its way to 12, but password sync itself is in 12. And it will provide a one-way sync of user ID, of, of, of AD passwords. So the password in AD gets passed to Domino. Domino then changes the, the password in the ID and ID vault. And so when the user logs in the, the next time, the ID is downloaded from ID vault, the password is changed, you get a new password. If I'm also using da, 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 shared in their password, because the password in AD is, is is the same as ID Vault, now my HTTP password could also be my AD password. Yes, three, all three passwords could be the same. Now, I'm not saying this is a good thing. You just all been asking it for decades. Every customer I ever went to wants to know why do I have to have multiple passwords? Multiple passwords are secure, but multiple passwords are also a pain in the backside. So you now have the capability of actually having one password to rule them all. Your AD password could be your notes ID password, and it can be your notes HTTP password. 
and it magically syncs when you change it in Windows or when an admin changes it in Windows. So what's the downside of this? There's no downside except that the main admins are very finicky about ever having anything installed on their domain controllers. And you do need a domino and you do need a domino utility server, not running, but a domino utility server needs to be needs to be installed on every writable domain controller in order to get the password synchronization running. Uh, it basically adds a shim inside of AD to then uh, allow it to intercept the password and write it out. If you are using things like Credential Guard um, or VBS, which is the new name, virtualized virtualization-based security on your domain controllers, this won't work. Uh, but Microsoft suggests you don't use VBS in your domain controllers anywhere. I've seen people do it and it doesn't have an effect, but if you, you, you can't use VBS slash credential guard and use this, it's it's one or the other. But you've got it, it's there. Ta-da, golf, uh, golf clap, golf clap for HCL. This has been decades in the coming. Uh, it's there, it was in 12. It's, it's fully documented, it fully works. We have customers using it today in production. So what else, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna talk a bit here, right? So I now have one password to rule them all, either my notes password and my HTTP password are the same password, or all three of my passwords are the same. So my AD user password, my, use, my, my notes password, and my internet password are all the same, or some variation thereof. Well, that's a bit dangerous because, you know, the hackers just spray my servers and guess passwords. So are they gonna lock out my AD user account all the time? Well, probably, unless you have internet password lockout and, and on. Internet password lockout has been in there for quite a while. What's new in 12 is internet lockouts based on the IP address. And this is more in tune with how the hackers work. So the way a hacker works is it doesn't, it doesn't go to multiple computers that they've compromised and guess one user from each of the computer and move on. So it doesn't guess S Smith from one computer and then J Smith from another computer and then M Smith from another computer. What it does is it guesses S Smith, J Smith, M Smith, Z Smith, right down the line. It just, just brutalizes them all the time. Well, if I had the old style lockout only, it would lock out S Smith after X number of attempts, let's say five. But it would still allow that IP address that the hacker has compromised to brute force my servers all the time. Well, in new in 12, and if you have 12, turn this on, you are now able to treat those failures of an authentication, treat the same as if it's the IP address. So even though my username is wrong, if the IP address is the same, after X number of IP addresses change the same, lock out that IP address, not the user, but the IP. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you only take one thing away from this webinar, take that, that's, that's whatever, wherever the presentation is that you're looking at, that's the thing to take away from this. Um, so what else goes on here? So I'm, I'm gonna talk about an interesting feature. So the interesting feature is that everyone knows about deny access groups. People leave, you know, people get fired, I add them to a deny access group. But by default, deny access groups only block notes client traffic, only block 1352 traffic. It doesn't block web traffic, it doesn't block LDAP, it doesn't block SMTP if you do an SMTP railing as a user. I don't know why you do that, so stop, but still. So that was, that's kind of interesting, right? I think it's a bit of a dodgy d setting to, for, for new domino servers, but whatever. So you gotta make sure that on each and every server you have, you set, if you have deny access groups, and I hope by God you all do, um, if you have a deny access group, you need to go and ensure that the box highlighted in red on every one of those tabs in that server document is set to yes. Because if it's set to no, which is the default, then you might deny them from notes, but they can still log into webmail. And if you have a disgruntled employee who realizes I can still log into webmail even though you've blocked me from notes, you're gonna get some interesting organizational wide emails from that now disgruntled ex-employee. So please, if, for whatever deity you pray to, go go change this setting to yes and, and, and on all your servers. Um, the reason it's coming to the fore is, is actually because of DLAO. I, I dis, dislike completely the what, what DLAO is being used for. 
I love Dilau as a tool. I hate Dilau as a truncheon or a, a gun that they're using for. But Dilau is has some security recommendations in there, and that's one of the recommendations that you'll see. And that that's why I, I bring it up in here. Um, all servers should have it set to yes on all the protocols. I I, I don't even basically if you're in deny access, you should be denied from everywhere. Um, I'll also bring this point up. You know, there's some talk, and I hope it's, there's some HCLs on on the call here. I, I really wish you'd bring DCT back. Uh, DCT helped users uh, uh, a lot. Domino uses a lot to secure their environments, and the deal I was kind of kind of got some of that in there. But if you were to redo start DCT, I think that would help a lot of people, and a lot of people would be really happy about that. Over security, right? So, I mean, it's not all server. It's not all user. It's some of it's just security, right? I mean, we, we don't know what you don't know. So one of the easiest things to do to fix security is to start disabling stuff. So disable anything you don't use, right? You, you disable IMAP, disable POP3. If you don't use LDAP, disable it. If you don't use remote debug monitor, disable it. Anything you can disable, go ahead and disable. If they're not disabled, but they're not started. So they're not in your server tasks, domino or any, so they don't start up at, at, at server time. If they're not specifically disabled in the server document, I can still start them manually, uh, either by a load pop free or a program document that, that's loading them or some other mechanism of starting a task in domino. So please, 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 please make sure that any protocol you are not using is set to be disabled. So you can disable things to enhance security. You can do the opposite. You can enable things to, to do security. One of the things you can enable is, is notes port security, which I think, still think today, the default setting in notes is to not encrypt, I believe. If anybody knows any different, please feel free to put in the chat. Uh, and you know, I, I, I will, we'll, we'll talk about that. But I, I'm, I'm still pretty sure today it's not on by default. If it's on at one end, it's on at both. Um, so you can turn on encryption at the client and it will automatically encrypt client traffic to and from. You can turn it on the server and client traffic will get encrypted. I'm going to point out here, this is only 1352 traffic that gets encrypted. So notes to domino or domino to domino replication as an example, that would be encrypted if you turn this on. Um, starting with later versions of 901, um, they added AES as a as a as a allowed encryption mechanism. Prior to that, it was it was RC4. I'm not sure what the default is when you turn it on. I went looking. I have a feeling the default might still be RC4. So if it is, you probably want uh, AES. You can do AES 256. You can do AES 128. You can do all kinds of stuff. Um, there's a blog post there of mine when I outline it back from the, when it was released back in the day. Uh, there's also a link there to HCL that actually tells you the most secure, uh, the fastest, and probably the best practices, I think is how they name it. And you probably want to aim for the best practices. So I would turn it on. And with logging, you can actually see it doing it. So that that that, that bottom right screenshot, that's a, a, a debug console running on a client that connects to a server. And it tells you exactly what it's doing. It's doing you know AES 128 uh, with GCM 256. Uh, and, and so you can see it's, it's no longer RC4 and when you turn it back off I could see RC4 so that's another thing uh, I will warn you though um, encryption one accelerators don't like it one accelerators don't like port compression too but if you don't have a one accelerator that also turn on port compression for what it's worth at the same time uh, I would do both if, if you don't if you don't have any issue with that at all. You do see it in the trace connection. You do see it's encrypted. In the trace connections, you don't see what the encryption mechanism is, though. So you still need that note in your city if you want to verify for sure what you get. What else have we got? We've got things that are not security. So I'm going to talk for a second here. Not, not necessarily about security, but about things that don't need security and this is a bit of a weird thing to talk about in a security presentation but i will so i get asked this all the time why why is my notes client slow why is my domino server slow blah 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 right slow 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 generally it's the antivirus settings um i, I if you've got crowdstrike you can pretty much ignore this because crowdstrike behaves in a different way sentinel one behaves in a different way but if you've got you know a a a, a 
antivirus endpoint protection solution that does scanning of the file, uh, you know, so a McAfee, a Symantec, uh, any any of the big vendors, um, you want to exclude some stuff. And it's strange to have this in a security presentation, but this is really the true. And, and there's actually a, a, a support KB there that outlines what to uh, what what to exclude. And the reason is a lot of his stuff is unreadable by anything other than Domino, right? Transaction logs, not readable demo. If you, if you rebuild directories, there's nothing really in there, right? All of these things can, can be excluded and on a notes client too. And, you know, specifically in the framework, specifically in the Eclipse, there's a lot of jar files in Eclipse and, and that really can kind of kill performance, especially when you're scanning, you know, you've got your virus scanner turned up to 11 and it's scanning 50, 50 levels deep and it's scanning all files over 500 meg. Right, don't be surprised if Notes runs like a dog, and don't be surprised if your Domino server is crashing every now and again because you're scanning everything. Um, that being said, but what happens if I click an attachment in Notes, or even in the web for that matter, in, 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 in iNotes or, um, or, or this? Well, it doesn't work the way you think it does. So when, 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 when I open an attachment in Notes, it actually downloads it to the user's temp folder. Uh, the, uh, the percentage temp percentage uh, user variable, and that's where it is stored when you download it, and that's where it is open from. So as long as you're not excluding the temp variable for the user, and God forbid you are, because if you are, you have more problems than I can ever fix. As long as you're not excluding that, the attachments that you open are still getting scanned by the OS level endpoint protection slash antivirus system. So you're still covered, even if you do tweak them down per HCL's recommendation, you're still not gonna get a virus from attachment provided your endpoint can, your endpoint uh, solution catches it. Um, not all are equal, the kids, remember that. Um, okay, so what else are we talking about? So miscellaneous security. Um, what are we talking about here? So power is knowledge. You know, forewarned is forearmed. Uh, it'd be interesting to kind of get a show of hands on, on this call about how many people knew about the, uh, the the security bulletin from HCL that I just outlined that came out last week or a week before. It's been out a couple of weeks probably. Um, you know, it would be nice. I, I used to like the old IBM notification emails because they would tell you all of the security fixes that have came out in the last week or so for all of the products. I don't know if HCL have one of them. If someone knows of that, can you put it in the chat, please? Because I need to sign up for it, because I, I I don't. The reason I found about that about that security bulletin was honestly Planet Lotus. Uh, I'll be fully <laughs> up here, right? That's where I, I find out stuff like that too. Um, but if I'm not talking about necessarily notes, you know, if you want to be scared and you never want to sleep again at night, uh, sign up for the CERT weekly email and, and just be aware of how bad Acrobat <laughs> Really is, um, you know. A few few months ago, a few weeks ago, the White House kind of upset a lot of people by saying, "Don't use C or C plus plus anymore for development." There's a real life example of, of Flash and Acrobat and Air being that. Uh, and every every month, every month, there's, there's an Acrobat issue, and that's because they're all written in C and C plus plus. But if you're looking at other products, because you don't just have notes in Domino on your environment, you have other things. Sign up for for this because because forewarned is being forearmed. The second thing you've got to do is, just because I've turned on all of these features that Darren has told me, I've got start TLS turned on. Oh, I've, 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 I've adjusted my ciphers. I am now solid because Darren told me in this open NTF webinar to do that. I am I am golden. I am as secure as Darren is. What are you? How do you know that? Well, you test. Test, 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 right? Verify. I, I, I completely trust that you think you've done it, but you really want to verify, right? Trust and verify, the old Ronald Reagan saying when, 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 it, when they were starting to take the nukes out of places. So how do you test, right? The easiest way to test your web browser, your web server is go to SSL Labs and put your web server in there. You want to check the box that says don't show. I didn't highlight it, I meant to, uh, but that box there says don't show my result to everyone else, because if you get an F, <laughs> you don't want to show that to the world. Um, at the bottom right hand corner of that screenshot, you can see where there's a couple of E's or a couple of F's. Um, hopefully, when you test, you'll get an A. Scroll down, because it'll also tell you cipher information. It'll also tell you H HSTS. 
um, you really want to get an A minus or higher, and there's honestly no good reason why you couldn't get an A plus. Um, scan it often. It doesn't have to be daily, it doesn't have to be weekly, but scan once a quarter because because things can change. You know, maybe scan after you've done a dom domino fix pack upgrade to see if there's ciphers that you can now turn on. Um, and you can use it on sites not just your own. So if you get a third party vendor and you get asked by uh, by your, your CEO or your CIO or someone said, hey, can you verify if this servers, if this vendor's servers are secure? Go to SSL Labs and scan them and then be afraid. <laughs> be very afraid. So what happens when you test? So this is my blog. Uh, it was actually done this morning because uh, I, I like to make sure my screenshots are correct. I didn't change anything this morning either. I haven't changed. Uh, this is actually running behind an Apache, uh, or maybe Nginx, one of the two. Uh, this is actually hide, hiding behind a reverse proxy at the good folks of Prominic. Uh, so thanks to, to Justin and John and uh, Doug and all the good guys out there. And uh, that that is configured to get an A+. Plus. I have basically everything turned on that I could, uh, including HSTS. So this is what you would expect to get when you were testing a website. You want A minus A or A+, plus, and there's honestly no reason you can get an A+. Plus. But that's not the only protocol, right? Everyone tests web, nobody tests SMTP. Well, you can. Uh, you can test uh, start TLS uh, by going to this website here and you can test sending and receiving. It will send you a log or a verbose or a not very verbose email of, of stuff going on when your SMTP server connects to this. Now remember, for Domino, you might not actually be the connecting SMTP server. You might be going to Spam Hero. You might be going to Postini, whatever, right? All over the place. But if you want to test what is happening and what a hop, this is how you can do that with Start TLS. Uh, nobody, or I wouldn't say nobody, very few people do this. And I think you should do this at least once a year to, to, to at least validate what you think is going on in your environment. Uh, how many slides do I have? I don't know how many we've got. Um, so this is what you get. Uh, so I'll go back a second. So this was a this was a, a a receive example. So this is me receiving an email from them, and it tells me exactly what's going on. Was start TLS enabled? Uh, you'll see that I'm using an X fund that is actually Spam Hero, um, and it came in, and yes, it was, and then it was sent to my internal Hero servers, and again, yes, it was. It was it was all it was all sent through. You can you can glean most of this from the headers. But this is a much easier way of doing it than, 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 than looking at the headers. So that's a receive. Well, what about a send? You can't tell send on a header, right? No, you can't. Uh, Darren, I'll answer my own question. So how do you ten test a sending of an email? Well, again, you can use uh, that same website and you can send an email to them and they will send you back whether it was TLS or and you get various information. You can get all of the uh, the, the enhancements, you know, the, the help, the start TLS, the 8-bit MIME, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it'll send you that back and it'll say, yes, you are start TLS, or no, you were not. So you can actually send an email and get proof back that it was that it was done. Other stuff, not necessarily related to anything we've talked about right now, but you do have other protocols on Domino that generally are not secure. And, and the one that comes to mind almost always is LDAP. You might be using LDAP for stuff. Uh, if you have AD synchronization, you're probably using LDAP. If you're using SAML, you're probably using LDAP. If you have any kind of copy integration where you're looking up addresses, email addresses to send scanned email, you're probably using LDAP somewhere. Um, you need to secure your LDAP. You can do the same thing. It's it's SSL, really. It's TLS. That's an old screenshot. They might have renamed it to TLS now. But 636 is your port of choice. Um, just checking the checkbox in DA is not sufficient. Um, you also need to import your, if you're doing this from AD, um, which most people are, uh, you need to import your AD um, certificate, your root into uh, your ID file of the server, which is not an easy process and is documented there. I don't think it's got any easier since the last time I documented, which was back in 901 Fixpot with us or for us a long time ago. But that's what you've got to do. When, when you hit when you hit issues here, it's all usually do with a server ID. Um, again, I see a, a shocking amount that, that aren't using LDAP-S, so to turn it on, um, Again, if you're using any type of AD integration on that, you need to import the CA into your, your, your server ID or all the server IDs that you're using. Um, again, secure LDAP, you know, 
most copiers now that have been replaced in the last five years are all support manure ciphers. Some may not. Um, you really don't want to start enabling SSL version 3 because at that point, SSL version 3 and Poodle, I can hack it in not a, lump, not a high number of transactions. So are you really getting anything if you turn it on and it's, it's not secure? Um, but again, you can debug it. Um, you can find out why is it failing. And also, enabling occasionally deprecated ciphers in Domino, the CBCs, can help. You can't limit that anywhere else, though. So it's kind of a bit of a problem. Um, so it's kind of pick your poison. It's do I reduce, oh, excuse me, do I reduce my security in Domino? Or do I just not have it turned on on my copier? Because at the end of the day, most SMTP servers and most LDAP servers will fail back to LDAP um, unless you turn it off. So you do have that option. And I don't know why, but I didn't create an end slide. But that is the end of the current presentation. I am completely out of slides. And I am five minutes early. So yes, yay me. I'll remind everybody to put your questions into the question pane. And uh, we've got we've got some good stuff for you, Darren. Uh, some stuff that might just challenge. Uh, oh, you're, you're only allowed to ask questions I can answer. I, no, I was just going to say <laughs> I, I I won't be asking any questions from Lisa, and she just put them in. <laughs> uh, okay, so so we're going to go in chronological order from the beginning of your presentation, and there's a, a couple of um, ones that I'm going to have to remember the specific topic. But anyway, we'll we'll jump right in. Um, going into the VSS backup, mm -hmm. uh, this is more of a comment than a question, but uh, I think it's worthy of discussion. If you're doing backups using Tivoli Spectrum Protection, that doesn't work with the new VSS functions in Domino, uh, at least in Frederick's experience. Have you got any experience with that? I, I do not. It's it's a it's a it's a try and see. Um, I'm not surprised that Tivoli would have an issue because there's a lot of custom code in Tivoli to do weird stuff, especially with Domino. So I'm, if anyone was going to not work, actually, I would, I'm not surprised. It's not that one. That, that would be a Daniel Nash question. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and uh, uh, our board member, Kim, uh, kind of asked this question right before you did the slide on Nginx uh, and, uh, and the rest, but which proxy servers do you find are the best fit for Domino customers? Probably Nginx or Apache. It depends on the customer, what, what they have familiar skills with. Um, yeah, a, lot of, a lot of them come to me specifically and ask for Apache because when Poodle hit, I did build a public accessible VM that was a, uh, it was a Linux VM that you could put in front of Domino and was already built to fix Poodle. So I got kind of famous for Apache in front of Domino Either or, whatever you're most comfortable with, I, I will say I think there's a lot easier documentation to follow for Apache than Nginx. You know, Jesse's scre screaming right now saying that's not true. Um, it, it's just horses for courses. They, they both do the same thing. I would say Nginx is faster. Um, at the end of the day, you're probably not going to tell any difference because your Domino server is going to be far slower than what your reverse proxy is. But, but both work. Both can do high availability themselves in different ways. You almost always want to install the reverse proxy on a Linux server in the DMZ. Uh, okay, and then related question. Uh, there was a question about HA proxy uh, as a free reverse proxy, uh, and the yeah. argument is that it's better than Nginx. Oh, look, Jesse commented. <laughs> <laughs> it was somebody else. <laughs> so, so HA proxy is what I would use behind the reverse proxy to do the spraying on the back end of the servers. I, I, I very much shy away from Apache's built-in mod, mod high availability. It's, 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 it's quirky. Um, I would have HA proxy usually on the same box. I, I would have you know Apache or Nginx forwarding to HA proxy, then HA proxy deciding which Domino server to go to. And there's lots of rules around that, right? Domino does not have session persistence across servers. So when you hit a Domino server, you almost always want to leave that user on that Domino server as long as one, the browser yeah. session is alive or the traveler session or the nomad session. Number two, as long as that server is alive and that browser is alive, you want to pin them, you want to make it sticky to that server. So make sure when you're doing all of this, that you use sticky persistence, usually using a cookie until Google really forced the world not to use cookies or anything. 
um, you, you can use session persistence that way or, or URL rewriting is another way to do it, but that's that's a key. And then, so I'd have it come in through reverse proxy there. I'd hit hit your proxy, hit your proxy would do a st sticky session to whichever domino server I've sent it to. And I can do load balancing on the domino backend. I can say, you know, equalize the traffic between the three, or I can build something like a passive active that says always send it to this server. And when this server's dead, send it to this server. So you can do either or from HA proxy, but HA proxy, I probably should have that in there. I don't know why it's not in there, but it's not, but it's a good question. That's that's yeah. the third part of this equation is it's the bit between Domino and Apache. Excellent. Uh, okay, next one, there's a comment here. AD password sync works great. The only thing that doesn't get updated are the notes ID files on other PCs. I suppose that really comes into the ID vault conversation. Correct. That's more than likely an ID vault is not is not. Yeah. So so ID vault gets complicated about which which ID vault do I use when I log in, right? It's first going to try my home server, and if it's not ready to get on my home server, then it's going to find an ID vault. And if like most customers, you have multiple ID vaults because you didn't understand that you had to keep the ID vault ID when you first created 10 years ago and you have no idea where it is. So you created an ID vault. ID vault gets confused about that. It's like, ah, oh, I've got two ID vaults. Which one of us, I, I, I know what the replica is. So as a general rule, I, I wouldn't say replicate your ID vault everywhere or create replicas of ID vault everywhere, but it, that can help a lot. But then you get in, in issues of how how often does my ID vault replicate? You can set it up in a in a connection dock to replicate every minute. It's not a big deal. There's not a lot of IDs changing in an ID vault, so you're not going to kill your your replicator or even a cluster replicator. Yeah, really, it's it's a matter of not like before you go the AD route, you want to make sure your ID vault's clean and working properly. Yeah, and, and uh, most of them aren't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so getting into the SAML section of your presentation, uh, OIDC is mentioned here, and I'll do a quick plug. Uh, Dave Kern from HCL, who was on this presentation uh, or on this webinar, um, did a set of uh, videos with me and the C3UG gang that are on the C3UG YouTube page uh, about OIDC and SAML. Um, but anyway, the question here, uh, there's also uh, OIDC is supposed to be better than SAML. Does it work for the client also? I've never tried it. I'll be, I'll be completely upfront here. I've, I've not tried the OIDC. Um, if you've got four months to spare, feel free to test it. It takes a lot of setup because uh, generally you, you don't want to touch your production AD environment. So there's a lot, a lot of setup with testing this stuff. And generally when, when, a, when a customer wants to see improve a concept, we actually build an entire AD environment and then build DOM next to it and show them a proof of concept because they, they don't want to touch it. And I don't know. And I will say, so, so SAML itself, you know, Active Directory is not the only one officially supported. Um, they, they're adding, you know, ADFS versions every release now. So I think, I think, the, I think ADFS 4 is supported for a while. 3 and 4 wasn't. But, but HCL and IBM before them were adding extra platforms into the SAML support. And you, you can use other providers. I, I think specifically Daniel Nash has maybe a blog post on using maybe Okta. I don't know what it was. I can't remember now. Mm, uh, yeah. and, and so you can you can kind of, kind of bastardize it. You just have to know an awful lot about SAML. And it's not an easy standard to learn, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave's been doing a lot of work on that. In fact, it's been updated since we did the uh, the series at C3UG, so we're planning on circling back around on that for V4. Go, go, if you're interested, go see that. Go see that presentation when they do it. Because mm. uh, he literally okay. wrote it. <laughs> so. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Dave, Dave just posted the comment. Uh, it's the last question if you want to tell this. Okay, so Dave says, FYI, AD to ID Vault Sync will change the password needed to authenticate to the ID Vault, but it's not going to touch the notes clients or the password. Uh, da, 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 it's not going to touch. Use to encrypt these local copies of the ID file. However, you can also use the new password as notes will try to use it, try to use it to download the ID from the vault if it couldn't decrypt the local copy of the ID on a client. Right, yes, that, that's, that's correct. Yeah, he's right. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me get back to where I was. Thanks, Roberto. Uh, okay, so um, in the uh, password conversation, 
about syncing passwords and so on. There's a question here about, um, so notes, client, and browser, but what about traveler and mobile devices? Don't they also come off of the HTTP password? They do. So yeah. traveler is, is HTTP, um, mobile client, so verse is really HTTP. Uh, they, they both, at least the thick client for, for Verse on the mobile device, so not the built-in iOS mail or not the built-in Google mail, but the actual Verse thick client, that has native SAML support in it. So if it works for the web on Domino, it works natively straight inside of, 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 of the clients now. Um, for anything else, it's straight HTTP password. So if I'm using the iOS client, it's going to hit my HTTP password. So my HTTP password is set to be the vaulted password it's still going to be my traveler password is my vaulted ID password. Yeah. Yeah, and the next couple of comments also from the same uh, attendee here uh, have to do more with uh, user management and making it easy to change passwords. But he says some users don't know how to change their credentials on their mobile and some don't even know that they have a password to log into traveler. Uh, but that isn't a domino problem. Right. Uh, then really tell them they've got free passwords and really hurt their heads. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and unfortunately, now I forget the context of these two comments. On servers prior to Domino 12, it's going to be RC4. You were talking about... Oh, I was talking about default uh, notes part encryption. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, and it says there's a notes.ini setting port uh, underscore ENC for encryption, underscore ADV equals 84 for servers between 901 and fixed pack 8 and is default starting on Domino 12. Ah, because that was a bit I couldn't find. I didn't know what the default was on newer versions. Okay. Uh, okay, Heather from HCL is on the uh, webinar. She says, what do you recommend as a domino email antivirus solution? Ooh, yeah, that's like religion. Uh, I'm not touching that one. Um, <laughs> that, yeah. Heather, what, what, what are you doing? Come on, give me, throw me a born. Uh, um, so it's it's difficult, right? So Domino does now have plugins, uh, or I wouldn't say plugins, extension points to put things like Clam AV directly into the mail router, right? That That is in there. Uh, again, I think it's probably Daniel Asher. There's a, t a blog post on this. It's very in-depth on how to do it. I think he may have wrote the code. Um, so you, because you, there's, there's two schools of thought here is do I scan it in the mail.box in which case I need something in Domino that knows how to put the mail on hold and then scan it trend micro is the obvious choice there because they've done it for years um, but with adding you know the, the third parties in there you can you can do that um, that being said, I'm, I'm a big believer of, you know, you, you, bad email should never be getting anywhere near my Domino server in the first place, uh, right? So I'm going to have a third party provider somewhere, like a Barracuda or a Spam Hero or whatever, right? Filling out all kinds of bad stuff long before. If, if you're relying on Domino to, 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 to spot viruses and spam, you're doing it wrong. Well, there is a, sorry if I chime in, uh, there's a project from Daniel that uh, makes any ICAP enabled server available for use for Domino. And also he made a tweak so that he put also the, the other one, there are two protocols. One is ICAP and the other is the one that you mentioned is... Uh, ICAP uh, was the one I was thinking of. I couldn't remember the acronym, but ICAP is the one because it was first added in connections a long yeah, time ago. You can use any ICAP uh, capable server as a front end to Domino. And uh, there are all the details, all the gory details in Daniel Nash's blogs. I've tested it, and also a colleague of mine has tested it and actually has implemented the production in a very big and secure environment. So it works really well. Can I ask? Can I ask what 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 it was integrated with? What was what was the ICAP sending to? The uh, there are a few servers that are ICAP uh, enabled. For example, one that works is Trend Micro, and uh, also Claim AV is um, is integrated as well. And uh, you can have any. ICAP server that you want 
Daniel built a test type observer that's available if you look in the blog post that you can use to play and check it. And once you've done it, you can switch to production, a real ICAP, a real antivirus server that provides ICAP capabilities. Uh, we'll, we'll put that blog post link in the description. Yeah, for the definitely. Blog. Anyway, there is no need, uh, hopefully going forward, there would be no need for a dedicated solution specific for them, like you mentioned, Darren, for backups. You, you used to have the DOM extension for backups in Domino, for Tivoli, and same is with antivirus. You mentioned Turn Micro or not, whatever. They have the extension for Domino. Hopefully, going forward, there will be no need for that because if we support any ICAP enabled server, then anyone will be good. So, so uh, Heather, please send all future questions to Roberto because he's yeah. far more knowledgeable yeah. than I am about this. I didn't even know. Uh, I couldn't remember the acronym. I couldn't remember ICAP. We've, uh, yeah. we've got several more questions. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to keep yeah. pushing ahead here uh, to try and get in before the end of our time. Um, so one of our attendees to the webinar, Manuel, uh, says that HCL does have a blog post of current security messages. Uh, and included a, a link that I will put in the uh, comments uh, or in the description section for the video um, so that everybody can get their hands on it. Uh, his comment is it mostly shows the old IBM products. Um, uh, okay, a question about uh, the time spent on passwords, um, but you didn't talk about pass keys or passwordless authentication. Ooh, did Thomas put that one in the chat? Uh, it was not Thomas, no. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, it's kind of here. Um, you you can you can do that now. I, I we saw it at Collabsphere in Chicago. And I, 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 honestly, I don't. I haven't paid enough attention to know if it was in if it was in 14 or not. I haven't actually looked. Uh, but it, if it's not here, it's coming. And they've they've basically yeah. added all the wiring to allow that. And so now I think it's just a matter of you know how how do we implement that in? And again, forgive me, I, I just haven't been paying enough attention to 14. Uh, it's kind of funny because I have a blog post called All New Features Since 901 and 14 is blank because I haven't even looked at it. I haven't even installed it yet. Um, so so I, I don't know, but it, it, if it's not there in 14, it is coming. And I thought right. Thomas said it was in. I'll steal your thunder. It is available in 14. Okay. Uh, and uh, HCL has been doing a series of videos on uh, new features in 14. And it's covered in that, and it's it's very cool. Yes, it is. Uh, Thomas was very excited when he was talking to me. Right? Yes. Uh, if I allow Domino to use my ID Vault password for my HTTP password, how do I proceed with thousands of current users who have who? Hold on a second here. Let me read the whole thing. If I allow Domino to use my ID Vault password for my HTTP password, how do I proceed with thousands of current users who have a particular ID Vault password and a particular HTTP password? If I do a change, do I change that for all users at once? The user support would be overwhelmed for the next two days. Yes, they would. Yeah, it's it's difficult. That is that is the it's, caveat here. Is you got to bite the bullet. There, there is there is a fix for people who don't have IDs in the Vault, right? So if you have straight HTTP users only ever had a HTTP password, one of the options in my screenshot. Is right. There's three options, but to to, to the, the the questioner's point, it is something that has to be planned out. This is real enterprise IT at that point. This is not a oh, it's a Friday afternoon. Let me turn this on, see what happens. This is one of the things where you've got to know the ramifications of it when you do it, and it is difficult, and it's it's more it's a communication thing. It's a bit like MFA, right? When I first turn MFA on. Do I just turn it on and walk off and hope the users figure it out? Or do I have weekly emails that no one's going to read for months before I do it, then turn it on, and then everything breaks, right? So you've got, you've got, you've got really two options here. And I, I, would, I would serve a communication route, really plan it, really turn it on. But, but it is, it's a big deal. It's what everybody's been asking for. Yeah. And they finally came through. With the All way right, it works. We, what a hack. We, we, yeah. Um, we've run out of time. Uh, I got one more comment to share here from the questions list, um, but we do have a few more questions. So what we'll do is we'll go back and uh, document them all, 
And then on the webinars page, there'll be a link to the Q&A, and we'll just write those all up as a blog post. Okay. Um, but the last comment to share is, is that Dave Kern, who, again, uh, the resident security paranoid at HCL, he says he hasn't been able to post in the chat, so he has been posting comments in Discord in the security chat there during this presentation, um, comments regarding just things that, that were presented. So uh, really encourage people to get connected up to the Discord and head over there and uh, and see what Dave's been talking about as well, because uh, he's on top of a bunch of this stuff. It's in it's in the Domino Admin channel to be. Domino Admin? Okay, thanks for putting Domino Admin channel. With that, uh, Darren, I will say right off the top, I've been watching the attendees. This is one of the best attended webinars we've had in a good long time, uh, and lots of thanks, lots of feedback, uh, positive. Uh, and so I will say thank you again for joining us and sharing your knowledge. Um, and uh, I'll just ask you to send me over the slides, and I'll post them up on the OpenNTF page as well. And with that, thank you, everyone, for joining, and we will see you next time. Thanks, everyone. All right.